Hey, what's going on, YouTube family? Check it out. So I'm a little swamped this week, but I did a live stream inside of the Base Nation Academy. If you're not a member yet, go check it out. Link in the description. Anyway, shameless plug. So we talked about core inversions. Ooh, yeah. Playing them on the bass. Everything that you need to know. Just triads, though. Just using the one, three, and the five. So in this lesson or in this clip or in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to play those, how to find these notes, and to find the different shapes that go with each inversion. So root note, first inversion, second inversion. And don't get that confused because the root note isn't the first inversion. It's weird. So root note or root inversion or root chord first inversion, then second inversion. So I'm going to map this out for you guys. Um, hopefully you get something from this. I know this is a little bit different, uh, but I thought it was helpful. When I started playing chords, and I started trying to build off of chords or trying to build chords up. I started learning the triad first, and then I went to the seven major seven chord. Then I went to uh, a nine chord. Then I went to 11 chord. Then I went to a 13 chord, but I had to start somewhere first. So even just building off of that, knowing what you can use, so you have like a, uh, say if you're trying to just create a chord and you have a D chord, you have a D, F sharp, and you have an A. It's just a, it's a major chord. So you have D, F sharp, A, or you have D, F sharp, A here, or D, A, F sharp here. So I try to learn that chord every single place and position on the fretboard that I possibly could. So... with that same exact root note. Okay, so then what I did was I took the inversion of that. I wanted to learn every single root note out of that triad and flip it around. So basically learning the inversions or playing the inversions. So now my F sharp is gonna be my bass and the D and the A are gonna be my accent notes, okay? So the D, the A and the F sharp, <clears throat> that's my root note, that's my root position here. And then I try to, to flip it so now the f has to be f sharp excuse me the f sharp has to be my bass and i would kind of would like i would cross it out too i would like say okay now my f sharp is my bass now the f sharp is done i got that then next i find the d and the a what's the closest d that i can play and what's the closest a that i can play with it still making sense and sounding melodically pleasing okay so my f sharp here what's the closest d you might think that D is the closest. I mean, it could be, could be, but it's a little stretch. And then I have an A. I have an A here, but obviously I can't play the A on the same note as the F sharp. I have an A here, that's way too far away. I have an A here on the second fret, that seems doable. So if I do F sharp, D, A. All right, now I have a first inversion. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I might have said second inversion, but this is the first inversion, F sharp, D, A. Okay, so there's an easier way to play that. I can play that open string for the, for the D. Now next, I would try to play or find that everywhere on the fretboard. So everywhere there was an F sharp, I would try to find that first and play that first inversion using the notes D, F sharp, and A. Okay, so now F sharp, I have to find another F sharp here, F sharp here, so now I have to find a D and an A. So, fortunately, I have an A here, close to the uh, F sharp, and I have a D right underneath. And that sounds beautiful, that is the first inversion of D major. Okay, so there's an F sharp there. Um, I will usually try to find these notes, the root notes on the E string or the A string. Finding them on a D string is a little bit more difficult because you can't really create a three note chord just starting on the D or starting on the F, sorry. Yeah, starting on the D string, I'm thinking about F sharp. But starting on the D string, if you start here, it's harder to build a chord because you don't have any more strings. You only have one more string underneath that one. So I will find an F sharp here, here, then I find an F sharp here. Obviously I can play an F sharp here and I can play the same exact way. But what I choose to do, since I have one string open or left open, I want to move that A an octave higher. It just sounds a little bit better to me. It just opens it up, it just opens the chord up that much more. And it sounds a little bit more prettier. A little bit more prettier. That doesn't make sense. It sounds more prettier. 
that still doesn't make sense. It sounds prettier. <laughs> like having some uh, English lessons today. Uh, to me, when you spread that chord out, because I can play it the same way. But hey, I have a higher string available. And then if you want to keep going up, you want to find another F sharp. You have a C here, you have a D here, E, F sharp here. The same exact formation. And if you realize, because we have patterns, I say this all the time, because we have patterns on the bass, you have to take that into consideration. You have to really use that to your advantage. The fact that we have patterns is going to be the same exact position here as it is here, as it is here, as it is here. Okay, but it's just a matter of maneuvering the notes to make them sound a little bit, you know, more stretched as if you have a bass note and then high two notes here. That just sounds better to me for some reason. Uh, I, I like how that sounds, just the contrast between the low note and then the high two notes. Okay, just sounds a little bit better instead of it all crunched up in one place. Okay, you get it? But anyway, uh, so the next the next uh, step that I would do, those are all the F sharps. Okay, so I will play all the F sharps. So I have D, F sharp, and then A. I already covered D and I already covered F sharp. So now I have, a, I have to make sure my A is my root note. So I would find all of the A's. So obviously we have an open A string. This, is, this would be my practice. I know it probably seems long and boring, but this would be my practice, literally. Um, I would take these chords, try to break them down, and I'm only I'm only dealing with two, uh, well, three notes, this triad, four chord. Only dealing with these three notes. Just imagine if you're trying to find the inversions for a seven chord, right? So, uh, or a nine chord. So uh, just with these three, I would just kind of maneuver my way around. So the A's. So I have A, then I have D, and then I have F sharp. Okay, so find all of the A's. A here, try to find one the E and the A string. Has an A here, A here, I have an A here, and an A here. Okay, so doom, doom, doom. So one, two, three, four. Okay, not bad, right? Four notes. So I have to find the A. So now I gotta find an F sharp. Then I have to find a D. Obviously, I can't play that on the same string, so you have A, F sharp, D here. And that's the second inversion, D chord, okay? Uh, there's another way to play that. Uh, instead of playing the open A, you can just use that A right on the E string. You have your F sharp here, and you have your D here. And there's your second inversion as well, just spreading that A note. All right, where's the other A? We found an A here. All right, so let's find it. Let's find it again. Let's do this together. So we have an A. Let's do uh, what other notes do we have to find? We got to find a D and an F sharp. So A, D is right underneath in this case. Well, in most cases. <laughs> so we have right underneath, and then an F sharp right here. So second inversion, D major chord. And the thing is, it's just a matter of memorizing these shapes and these forms. Okay, so we have, uh, sorry, probably heard that in the mic. <laughs> so we have these shapes. It's really only two shapes because you're really just manipulating the two. You're moving up an octave. So, so with the F sharp, and we had that shape, right? So for the, the second inversion, we have that shape and that shape. And I can play that same thing down here. Again, we're just moving that second note an octave higher. We're moving that D up an octave higher. All right, so I usually play all of my chords like this where they're stretched out a little bit more. Just because I like the sound of the contrast. So you'll hear most of my notes sounding like that, especially if I'm playing a root note on the E string. Okay, uh, so we have second inversion here. Where was the other A? Here. When you get up to here, it's just another octave right so you have so say for instance you have the e open strings and then it starts one two three four five six seven right those are the seventh frets here i just imagine this as a second little mini bass right so we have e a d g 
and then frets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it's the same exact formation, it's just smaller. Okay, so that's how I like to think of it. So it's a lot easier to memorize these notes up here when you think about it as a little mini bass <laughs> right here. So if I just wanted to play that, it'll be the same exact thing that I will play down here. So same exact formation. Uh, wait, that's the wrong one. <laughs> there it is. And then. So really only two shapes for each triad. Okay, so two shapes for the D, two, sa two shapes for the F sharp, two shapes for the A. Okay, very simple. Um, it's just a long process if you don't really know the notes. So if you have trouble finding the notes, don't worry about that. It'll it'll come over time. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I know that was a lot of information, but if you just slow it down and take your time, you'll be able to get the concept. Uh, like I said before, if you have any questions, comment below. This was just my concept or my way of learning how to play these chords and inversions and the best way that I think they sound on the bass. All right, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.